So while we are letting people in, you want to open up. Um, I have opened up week 14 in my Google Classroom. Um, you want to open up this photosynthesis flow chart. So there is a word bank at the bottom here. You should have spots. Um, the words won't drag, but you can type them in. Um, so you can work on that while I'm letting people in. I'm going to give us about five minutes. So you guys are working on this flow chart in preparation for tomorrow's test. Okay, so you guys were just filling this out. And here's what we got. Um, so photosynthesis in general, right, is divided into two sets of reactions, the light reactions and the dark reactions or light independent. Um, this is all taking place in the leaf of a plant, more specifically in the chloroplast. Even further than that, you have the thylakoids and the granum. Um, they have pigments. The chloroplasts have that chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight in various wavelengths, which is what gives them the energy. So this um, sunlight <clears throat> will be used to split water in the process of photolysis. When you split water, you get hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, <clears throat> plus electrons. The electrons came from the splitting of the bond. Those electrons then go into an electron transport chain. This is all happening in the thylakoid membrane. The energy from the light accepts, excites the electrons. They move into the electron transport chain where they make ATP and NADPH. Two different chains make two different things. So that is all happening in the thylakoid. Out in the stroma of the chloroplast, the stroma is where we have the light independent reactions or carbon fixation. So we're fixing carbon into a usable form in the Calvin cycle. And the Calvin cycle can be used to make glucose. Any questions on any of that? Remember, we have a test tomorrow and we will need that information for our test, okay? So the next thing, a couple of you got an invite to join um, on the breakout room with Ms. Hefty. So if you got an invite to join that group, you can go ahead and join her. Hey, this I'm on the wrong, look at that. I'm on the wrong slides. Okay, so we're gonna go, we did the flow chart. Um, I got screens going crazy. Okay, we did the flow chart. Now we're gonna go over our review. And when we're done with our review, we're gonna do a fun little quiz is. It's kind of like a combination between Kahoot and um, Quizlet Live, so that's kind of fun. And then, um, and then after that, you'll be turned loose for your flex time, which is just going to be independent practice, getting ready for tomorrow's test. Tomorrow's test will be in the Illuminate Ed Lockdown browser, so we won't be on a Zoom because you can't have the camera and the lockdown browser at the same time. Okay. So um, it'll open up during third hour, and then you will have a window of which to take it, or not third hour, um, this is fifth hour. So it'll open up during fifth hour, okay? Any questions on the agendas for the moment, the goings-ons? Okay, today is December 1st, which is natural, nat oh. Today is December 1st, which is World AIDS Day. So anybody, um, anybody have anybody they know that has HIV or passed away from HIV? Anybody? I have a good friend who passed away from it. So today is a day to think about that always. I was looking for somebody. Okay, they might be joined in. Okay, so now I want to open up. I don't know why I have things open in multiple windows and they're 
what I want isn't necessarily in the window I'm in. So I'm looking. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this one. Sorry for my delay of game. Make that big and then I need to switch my screens. New share. Here we go. Okay, so um, I was looking over your test and it has around 36 questions. Right now, do you see 8182 Review Biology? Are we on the same page? Thank you. Um, so your test currently has 36 questions, 34 are multiple choice, and two are short answer types. I will probably throw out a couple questions. I was going over it. Um, and I know we didn't talk about C3 or C4 plants, so there might be like two questions thrown out, but it's going to be right around um, right around 34 questions, mostly multiple choice. Okay. Um, and it'll be in that Illuminate Ed Lockdown browser. The first part I would want to remind you about the thermodynamics lecture. So as I was going through the questions on the test, I saw a number of questions related to that thermodynamics lecture. So I would open that up. That was our first one from this unit. It was a Friday. Um, and I would review that PowerPoint. Anabolic, catabolic, first and second laws of thermodynamics, heterotrophs, autotrophs, chemotrophs, all those things were mentioned in that lecture. And I saw questions on the test related to those, okay? So we spent a lot of time recently talking about photosynthesis and I, and I wanted you to remember way back to when we talked about thermodynamics. Okay, so going over your answer sheets, um, you should have gotten yours returned to you if you turned it in already. I tried to get them all returned before we got started so that you could have it open in front of you. Um, you should also have a copy of the answers um, there as well. So you can make notes or um, highlight or asterisk anything you want while we go over this. So this first one has to do with releasing energy. And the big key concept, remember, energy is released when bonds are broken. Energy is stored when bonds are formed. In general, any molecule. Now, more specific to ATP, they're released when the bonds between the phosphates are broken. Right, So we can go from ATP of three to ADP of two to AMP of one. We can add them and we can store energy. AMP for mono to die, to try. So ATP. I did see a test question that I don't have directly on the review sheet, the components of ATP. So ATP is made up of adenosine or adenine ribose and phosphates. Okay, so you will want to know the components for the test. How is ATP formed during the second stage? This has to do with the movement of the hydrogen ions in the electron transport chain. Remember, we pumped hydrogen into the thylakoid space against its gradient. It diffused out the ATP synthase in order to make ATP. So that was ATP plus P, right? Or ADP, right here at the bottom of the picture. ADP plus P makes ATP. From the first lecture, we talked about alternative forms of energy. Some examples, wind, solar, hydro, geo. You guys gave me a lot of elastic and static. Also from that first lecture, we didn't really talk so much about the food chain Components, we talked about heterotrophs and autotrophs. Heterotrophs cannot make their own food, autotrophs can. We know that heterotrophs eat autotrophs and other heterotrophs. Um, we talked about the second law of thermodynamics where entropy is involved and that we're losing usable energy with each transfer, okay? So the second law of thermodynamics um, is the entropy and we lose the majority of energy. Only 10% is being passed down through the photo, through the food web. Okay, so we did talk about that piece. 
Respiration and photosynthesis, we also talked about that in the first lecture, that they're interrelated on their metabolic pathway where one's product is the reactants for the next, right? So photosynthesis uses CO2 and water to make glucose and oxygen. And then cellular respiration uses that glucose and oxygen to, and makes CO2 and water. Continuing on from that first lecture, autotrophs, self-feeding, heterotrophs, other feeding, other sources, okay? Some examples, any animal, any fungi, any protist, um, autotroph, many bacteria, protist and plants. Um, and then they can be either phototrophs or chemoautotrophs. So chemoautotrophs like the bacteria use the chemicals. I did see a question on chemoautotrophs on the test. Reactants and products, you really just need to know which side of the um, equation they're on, right? Which side of the arrow? So we know CO2 plus water yields carbon, um, sugar and oxygen. So the left side, these are the reactants. They're going into the process. These are the products, glucose and oxygen, they're coming out, okay? So the tests, the questions will use the words reactants and products. For each of the phases that are we covered of photosynthesis, you wanna know what goes in and what comes out and where it occurs. Okay, you're gonna see a ton of questions that basically are repetitious. And they ask you the same thing, but in a different way, okay? So on this review, I saw like three or four that asked you about the first stage of um, photosynthesis. So the products of the second stage, so the first stage being the excitation of electrons here, the second stage being the electron transport chain. So the second stage makes NADPH and ATP. The, the balanced equation just adds sixes in front of the smaller molecules. Six carbon dioxide, six water yields C glucose plus six oxygens. <clears throat> so I refer to the steps in the light reactions as light excitation. The sunlight excites the electrons and the electron transport chain, right? And the two make two different things. So when you're describing those, you would, I found a different picture. I think I would like to change this too. Um, but when you are describing those, you're looking at the photosystems here, right? The sunlight is hitting the photosystems. Electrons are being excited. At the same time, water is split. Electrons replace those lost. And in the process, we make ATP and NADPH. When you split water, the plant will use the hydrogen for the hydrogen concentration gradient for ATP. It will use the electrons to replace those lost. It will not use oxygen. So oxygen is a waste product or a byproduct of photosynthesis. It is released into the atmosphere. Any questions one through 13 so far? So lots of questions um, gonna be related to the phases of photosynthesis and how they work, what goes in, what comes out. I would review my light reactions PowerPoint. Um, the two electron transport chains, this picture itself is somewhat cluttered or confusing, but I liked it because of it, the descriptions of each of the steps. So it kind of talked about each thing. Um, so the two electron transport chains, you're talking about electrons being passed from one protein to another within the thylakoid membrane, pumping hydrogen against its gradient, it diffuses through ATP synthase to make ATP. The other does the same thing, except doesn't deal with hydrogen. Let's find another picture. Um, Electrons are excited, they pass from protein to protein, ultimately adding a hydrogen, it's missing here, my picture got cut off, adding a hydrogen to NADP to form NADPH. Both ATP and NADPH are needed 
for the next reactions, right? Now, me talking about this doesn't do a whole lot, truly, for you to understand things. You got to draw this process out yourself. Make your own flow chart. Um, you got to sit with it and talk about the steps, how they make sense to you. Some of us are going to view it as a sequence in a flow chart. Some of us are going to go one, two, three, four, five. Some of us will be able to draw it out. But talking about it that way is more useful than just the words going in. And then what do I do with them, right? You got to do something with them. Okay, moving on to pigments. One second. So on the test, it does ask you about the pigments in plants as well as how pigments work. So we know that pigments work by reflecting certain wavelengths of light and absorbing others, right? My shirt is orange because it's reflecting orange light. You have mostly chlorophyll A and B present in plants that are undergoing photosynthesis, right? A and B down here, we see they are not absorbing the green wavelengths of light, they're reflecting. So they appear green. They're absorbing all these wavelengths above and below the green spectrum. You also have carotenoids, oranges, xanthophylls. So these give us the fall colors, right? We don't see them in the summer because there's much more chlorophyll than there is uh, carotenoids and xanthophylls. These show up in the fall because the chlorophylls start to um, die off, if you will. So the wavelength of light that is hitting our earth at that point is not in the spectrum. Okay, so chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, those are what you're going to find in your photosystems. So um, then you defined words in your own definitions, photosynthesis. Um, we all have different ways of saying this. I said the process which converts sunlight into organic molecules. Um, you may have specifically said glucose. So changing sun's energy into food for a plant or um, changing sun's energy into sugars. That's fine too. A photosystem, this is a photosystem. This is a chlor cluster of chlorophyll pigments. Each one of these green circles is a chlorophyll. <coughs> so electrons get excited and they bounce around until they hit the reaction center and then they explode. They don't actually explode. They jump out of the, the system though. Photon is the unit of light energy. So on test, rather than sun, I'll probably use the word photon, meaning the sun's energy. Photolysis I added after I was reviewing with a student um, because they were getting confused with all the photo words. So I thought maybe add this one just to keep track of all our photo words. Photolysis is photolysis, breaking with water. It's when you break the water in that first phase of photosynthesis. Pigments are proteins that absorb certain wavelengths of light and reflect others. Okay, see all these questions are pretty repetitious when it comes to those electron transport chains. Photosystem two is making ATP. Photosystem one is making NADPH. So I might scroll back up to my photosystem pictures. This one I like. So this is photosystem two. Water split, electrons excited, ATP is made. This is photosystem one, electrons are excited, NADPH is made. One was discovered before two, that's why it's named one. Oh, here, if I just would have scrolled down further, I would have had my picture. Wah, wah. There we go. So there I have my two, boop, boop, boop. Let's just make that a little smaller. There, now he fits on a little better. Okay, so there's my photosystems, all the green clusters, right? Photosystem two, water split, electrons excited, they go make ATP. Photosystem one, electrons excited, they make NADPH. This is all happening in the thylakoid membrane. So those discs, the membrane of the disc is called the thylakoid, right? One of these discs. The dark reactions, the sugar making part happens out in the space of the chloroplast. That space is called the stroma. 
Dark reactions have several names. Light independent reactions and Calvin cycle are two other names for the Calvin cycle right here. Describing the steps, CO2 goes in and combines with RUBP, okay? So RUBP and CO2, with the help of the enzyme Rubisco, it's not showing in this picture, will make PGA. Maybe you don't need to know all of the things that happen along the way, but you should know that we use ATP and NADPH to get where we're going, okay? What goes in, what comes out? In the end, PGAL is used to make our glucose. So we'll make two PGALs, put them together to make glucose. And then we need to use even more energy to recycle all of that back into RUBP. So RUBP stays in the system. We use ATP and NADPH to make PGAL. Any questions on any of those so far? The last question, I'm zeroing in on just the carbon fixation phase, this piece up here, fixing carbon into a usable form. So that involves CO2 combining with RUBP in order to make PGA. That's the first phase. Remember we watched that animation and it had, um, it combined the five carbon and the one carbon, they made six, but they split immediately in half into two threes. Okay, so if you had turned your um, review sheet in before class, you already got it returned with this answer key. Um, people who maybe finished the review in, um, in the side, the breakout room, you'll get the review sheet back after I um, score your sheet in, then you'll get this and the answer key back as well. Okay, any questions on the review? One thing I, I did see on the test that I didn't see on the review sheet, the word stomata. So going back to your leaf structure, remember we made that, that model of a leaf, the stomata where the pores, they open up to let CO2 in and O2 out, water in, water out. Um, so the stomata is on there um, with their guard cells. So you would wanna be familiar with that as well. So that wasn't on the review sheet, but you kind of talk about it when you talk about CO2, I guess. No questions on this. We are going to go to the next thing on our agenda.